We're excited to welcome the owner, founder of Denver's Two Comedy Works, Wendy Curtis. Thank you so much for being on your show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Let's jump right in. Joe Smoke writes in, it makes all the sense in the world that when times are tough, people need to laugh even more, yet it can be expensive, he writes, to go to a show at a place like Comedy Works. Is your business recession proof? You know, we kind of found that, that comedy, um, that it is a bit recession proof. Um, statistics show that people actually drink more, drink more alcohol during tough times. That's just, those are just the facts. And we've just found that in our history that comedy itself has been recession proof. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that we don't, that we don't change things up a little bit. Um, and make sure that there's affordable tickets as well as the bigger acts with expensive tickets and things like that that really sell. Um, but he, everybody needs to laugh, and we need to make sure that they've got good access to it. You talked about affordability, and Steve Chun writes in saying, with people carefully thinking how to spend their money on entertainment, how do you compare your ticket prices at Comedy Works compared to, say, a night at the movies? Well, um, it's a few bucks. It's a few bucks higher on the weekend. On the on the weeknights, though, it's pretty much the same. And a Coke is a Coke at the movie theater or at Comedy Works. Uh, we don't uh, we don't serve popcorn, expensive popcorn, but we do have an, a wide array of great cheese food products. You fry cheese food in any kind of a form, and with maybe we've got it. James Rison, why'd you open up the second Comedy Works? And let's know how it's going. You know, that project has been in the works for a very long time. It's been in the works in that location for three years, and prior to that, for several years. Just where do I go? How do I duplicate what I've got? How do I not cannibalize what I've got? How do I wrap up the, the region um, to make way for no competition coming in and all of those things? So. There was, there was a tremendous amount of market research, formal market research, a lot of informal, my own informal market research, which just confirmed everything that the real numbers told me. Mm -hmm. And that was the place to go. And the project that we're in is the project that we should be in. It's, it's perfect for us. You and I were talking before we started just about the intrigue surrounding the comedy business and how many questions people just have about right. how it works. Jim Hansen writes in saying, how do you decide who you're going to book, and his question, is it as simple as to who you think is funny? You know, if it, I, no, it's not, it certainly isn't about my opinion. That, that would leave us with a couple of comics, maybe the same ones, week after week, um, because we all have our own likes, you know? Um, so I really have to concentrate on who sells tickets, um, what people are looking for. I look at other markets and what's happening. Um, I talk to a lot of people in the business. It's a small industry. Like, like any of our industries, we know each other from all over the country. And, and um, you know, what's selling, who's hot, who's, who's young and up and coming, there, you're going to see a lot of that happening. With two clubs now, I've got 104 weeks to book, not 52. And um, so that means that you're going to see a lot of the young people on the rise at Comedy Works. You've been... Pretty successful in, in picking some comics who maybe came here first when they were young and, and are now pretty successful. I mean, the article's written about when you opened up the, the, the second um, uh, second club. I mean, there are a lot of big names that swear by you. How do you, did you, did you get lucky? I mean, have there been failures as well? Sure, sure. Um, and I don't know if it's ever a failure because it could take 10 years to pop, it could take 25 years to pop. I mean, look at somebody like Louis Black, who's been in this business forever. And I used to pay him a pittance, um, and uh, and now you know nobody can afford him. Um, but but so I'm not sure that actually there's ever any failures. Um, but they are they are terribly they are terribly um, uh, kind when it comes to them making it big when you've been kind to them on the way up, which is employing them. Yeah. And you know you try to pay them fair wages. And on the way up, and, and not you know do any harm to them in any way, and and shove it to them, and and they're just they're just kind, and they want to give back. So you talked about your preferences, and if you were just booking on what you thought was interesting, you'd have only a couple of comments. <laughs> uh, Kathy and Shantani wants to know what do you find funny? Um, I find a lot of things funny, but mostly you know I find just uh, normal observational, um, everyday sort of stuff funny and the people that can make fun of that. and um, But I find a lot of things funny. You know, 
when you're in this business and you hear, you know, you've got big mom ears, no matter where you are in the club, you can hear what's going on. If there's a ruckus in the showroom and somebody's talking too loud, if um, something's going on on stage, you can hear all of it. And you, it's just part of your, you know, I've been doing this for now, uh, I hate to say, more than half my life. And you can, you hear things all of the time and it's just in your consciousness. And so I find a lot of things funny now. When we had uh, Josh Blue on the program, we asked mm-hmm. him that question. Um, he talked about uh, people getting kicked in a particular part of their anatomy. <laughs> that sounds like Josh. <laughs> He's a naughty boy, isn't he? And so funny. So funny. Almost <laughs> made me do a spit take uh, in my watch. <laughs> um, Jim Grimes from Louisville wants to know, are you funny? Um... If you were to ask my best friend, Kathleen Madigan, she would say, Pumpkin, you're not funny. Um, when I've always, I always ask her for, you know, I always ask all of them for, for help. If I'm going to do a speaking engagement or do something like this, like, help me. Everybody always wants to know if I have a joke and I don't have a joke. Help me. Pumpkin, you're not funny. But I do think naturally, you know, um, interesting conversation, yes, I am. Is that egotistical of me to say? Yeah, I'm funny. Nothing wrong with that. George F. Finger writes in, uh, comedy has always been a male-dominated industry. So I want to know if you've run into sexism before and how you've handled it. You know, I've not. Um, it, it is a male industry, though. It is, right? and it's been, that's been pointed out to me. <laughs> but it had to be kind of pointed out to me. I just kind of grew up in a household where I was uh, one of two kids, two girls, and I was never, I mean, it was just never pointed out that because we were girls we couldn't do something, you know. Our father was really big into um, motorcycles and cars, and and so, you know, we raced motorcycles, and we did those things, too. And it wasn't ever – it was just never in my in my world that I couldn't do something because I was a girl. And this has been no exception. I started as a cocktail waitress. They were girls. And then I, you know, just worked my way up. So um, I haven't. I really haven't. But, yeah, I think it is now that, you know, again, it keeps getting pointed out to me. I think it is a male-dominated industry. Sorry about that. Uh, That's okay. You talk about your personal kind of growing up, and, and Lisa Monroe writes in, and it's a pretty personal question. She said, I, I read in an article that you had suffered from bulimia, and she wants to know how you overcame it. Well, I was really, um, I was really a very amateur bulimic, I found out. I was really a compulsive overeater, and... Um, you know, people are alcoholics and drug addicts and sex addicts and food addicts. And that was my thing. That was my coping mechanism. And um, while, you know, I did have a little bit of bulimia in high school and a little bit of college, when I got into therapy, I learned I was really an amateur at it. There were some pretty good bulimics out there. I kid, but um, I, did, I did a lot of therapy, a lot of therapy. And I had to read those books that the therapist would give me and and uh, kind of face myself and my own demons, and, and I still struggle. I still struggle with food issues. Um, I mean, I think I always will, mm-hmm. um, but it's a tough thing, and, uh, and it's a dangerous thing, so I hope that if anybody's out there, they, that they look at it and they get some help. I'm going to shift you back to something more funny. Okay. Steve Ruskin writes in, uh, who are some of your favorite performers and why? Well, I do love Kathleen Madigan. It's not because um, she's my best girlfriend, but I think she's just one of the funniest people I've ever met. She's a little bit like the little brother I've never had. She teaches me about politics. I go, now, I'm curious about why had the price of gas gone down so much? What? Now, why was it pumpkin? And uh, anyway, um, but I love her. And I do love Louis Black um, because he lets me think um, when I'm watching him that I know a lot more about politics than I think that I do. Um, but I like a lot of different people. I love Josh Blue. Um, I love physical humor. Like we have a local guy named Brian Kellen. Oh my gosh, the funniest, silliest, most rubber band human being on the face of the planet. Um, I love a lot of different comics. And you do because you know their struggles mm-hmm. on the way up or um, what they're going through right now. And um, you love them because of what they do on stage and for lots of different reasons. So there are probably a lot of people out there who have the same question that Vince had who wrote in saying uh, he's performed a few times around Denver at smaller clubs, wants to know what point in his stand-up comedy career should he consider trying out for a spot at Comedy Works, and do you hold open mics 
for folks out there who want to. Absolutely. Tuesday night downtown is our open mic night, Wednesday night at the New South Club. And you call into the New Talent Hotline number. And uh, you sign up, and that's how you do it. We have about 180 people, if you can imagine, working our new talent program. And um, I hire professional comedians to work with them to help bring them up. Not just so they get, so they get just stage time, but they get feedback and they get help um, with that stage time. So It's a nerve-wracking thing to be able to do. Ugh, I can't imagine. I can't imagine doing it. We just do this. This is just TV. Yeah. It's easier. Yeah, I think it's a lot easier. Wendy Curtis, I thank you so much well, for coming thank on you. by. Thank you. Congratulations for having on me. the new, uh, not so new, kind of new. Two months. I've been open two, two months in a week or something. Second like location of Comedy Works. Thank uh, you. From Greenwood Village in Landmark area in the original downtown Lotto. We hope you'll come back at some point. Well, thank you. I'd love to. Thank you so much.